Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. Thank you for tuning in today. A while back I had promised you some work that I was going to do to the rear tailgate of my 2005 Honda Element. And today's the day where I do that work. And specifically what I'm talking about, I've got some clear coat issues across the top of it. Also there's some rust spots around uh, where the lock cylinder is and a couple of other spots on the tailgate. And I want to black out the emblems in the back to match the front, which I think is kind of cool and seems to be the thing now. Uh, in addition to that, I'm also going to put LED taillights into it, uh, but not the turn signals, just the brake lights uh, are all I'm really after and reverse lights so I can maybe see a little better as I'm backing up and be seen a little better while I'm driving. So come with me now on my journey as I dress up the rear of my 2005 Honda Element and hopefully there'll be some information that could help you with your vehicles. Job one for me was to wash the Element and FYI, it was the first time I washed it since I got it. I did all that work and I never washed it. Well, that's just kind of how I am. Anyway, I did that so that I could get all the dust and dirt and everything off of it so I could start with a clean slate. One of the things I've noticed about this element since I got it was this large gap that seems to be back here where this tailgate, if you want to call it that, meets the body, particularly over on this side. Now, I think the reason for that is uh, there was definitely evidence of a rear end collision back here. Uh, the bumper showed that. So I think maybe this glass might have got broken or for whatever reason, this was off of here, got moved around, whatever. So I'm going to try to readjust it back into position to where I can get this to fit a little better. And that'll be job one. After that, I'm going to uh, take apart all the stuff on the inside, remove things like this uh, so we can start working on this clear coat and the rest of the stuff that's going on back here. But before we do that, I'm going to be, as I said, blacking out the emblems in the back here. I've purchased new ones. I could reuse the ones that are on it, but I got new ones just to make my life easier. And yes, this one came at a price. These are about 120 bucks. To start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scuff this up with a scotch pad uh, so that I can prep it for paint. You don't want to paint on a shiny surface like this because the paint could chip off. So I'm first going to scuff it, then hit it with some primer, and then the paint that I plan to use is the same stuff I used in the front, which is this Eastwood chassis black. This way it'll give the paint plenty of time to dry before I install them. Here's the part number for the Element emblem, and here's the part number for the Honda emblem. To do this, I'll be using a clean scotch Bright pad. Seems a shame to mess it up, but it's gonna be better. I think it's gonna look really cool. Anyway, I wanna be careful not to bend this because it'll break, this is plastic, so super careful here but I just want to put like a tooth. That's probably the best way I can put it. Something for the paint to adhere to. And instead of just going in one direction, I'm going to go in multiple directions. So I'll go like this, then I'll flip it over, and I'll go the other way. I hope you can see the little bit of cross hatching or whatever that I put on there. I'm going to do the same to the Honda emblem. This one's particularly shiny. Almost feels like a crime taking something that's like $120 and scratching it up. But this is the life of a custom car person. I could just remove the ones that are on the vehicle and then reinstall them with new two-sided tape. That's totally a possibility, except for the two-sided tape I have is a lot thicker than the tape that's on here, so it would stick out more from the body. Hence the reason I went in this direction. But if you're looking to save some money, I'll show you how to remove these without breaking them. You can do these to your existing emblems and all it's gonna cost you is some time. Again, I went for that dull shine. Normally what I would do before I put on a coat of primer is I would put on what's called prep spray. And I do this to eliminate any grease or oils or anything that might be on the surface that won't allow the paint to adhere properly. However, that stuff dissolves adhesive and guess what's on the back of these adhesive. So I just took a cloth Cleaned them off as best I could. Didn't touch them with my hands when I laid them down here. Now, I'm going to add some of this primer. And when you add this, you don't need to run it on so thick. You put it on in thin coats until you've got the proper coat. It's better to do a bunch of thin coats than it is to do one big coat and have drips and runs everywhere. It's also nice to be doing this on a warm day. Cold days, paint doesn't stick as well. But a day like today it will not only stick, but it'll dry well, although it is a little humid. And that may lengthen drying time a little bit. We'll let that coat dry, come back in a few minutes and repeat until we put on the finished coat. As I mentioned, job one 
is going to be to get this thing lined up where I want it. And it looks like it needs to go in a bit more on this side. To do that, I'm, I wasn't sure if somebody was moving these fasteners that go in from underneath this way or these up here. But judging by these witness marks, you see these shadows up here? I say that's where it went wrong. So that's where I'm going to start my movement is I'm going to loosen these and push it back and try to push it into position and then tighten everything down. These are 12 millimeter. I'm going to try to get them to where they're a little bit tight, but loose enough where things will move. That way I can just sort of knock it into position. Very careful because every time I open it, every time I move it closer this way, it can come into contact with the uh, roof. So I want to do this slowly so I don't create more work for myself. Doesn't look like that's working very well. Perhaps it's time for plan B. I don't see any screws or anything. Although I'm going to remove this uh, lens in here because there may be screws under that. And I was right. These are usually the ground as well as uh, something that fastens these down and this may very well be a losing battle i may not be able to do anything with this but i'm going to try so as you saw that just unclips carefully unclip it and that gives me access to the magic fasteners these are also 12. temporarily reinstall this rubber seal i don't want it getting pinched not worried about this falling or anything, the hatch struts are holding it up. I think what I'm going to do is tighten this down and probably give up on this dream. I'm going to say that's good enough. There's likely defamation of the body from whatever collision it was in. Let's move on and get that paint stuff taken care of. While I'm back here, I noticed that somebody had, well, not been too kind to this third brake light and, well, that happened. So I've got a new one of these and since I'm replacing the bulb anyway, I might as well do that now. Yeah, that just didn't work. There's this electrical connection and two 10 millimeter fasteners. So the problem with this one is, is this tab got broken off. You can see it's got one on this side, but this side's broken, so it wouldn't hold on anymore. Check out my new one. To open these and avoid issue, push in on this when you pull that off, and that will help alleviate the issue. Ooh, I got a new connector. Here's the new bulb that I'm gonna use for this one. And this one actually flashes when it first activates. I'm curious if this works or not. These are also red illumination. So let's pull it out like that. Actually, it looks like that bulb's burned out anyway. This goes in in place of the old. Let's see what it does. Cool. Oh yeah, I'm keeping that. That certainly gives this element a more modern feel. Late model cars do that. Help warn other drivers that you stopped or you're stopping or slowing down. I've been in rear end collisions before and if I can avoid them, that'd be awesome. That's one problem solved. In between doing that, I came out here and put another coat of primer on and everything looks good. So I'm going to be uh, doing the chassis black for the final uh, coats. Same thing as with a primer, light coats until you get the thickness or pigment that you want. But don't try to goop it all on. Every once in a while, turn the can upside down and clear out the tip so you don't get little spitty bloopy things. I'll let that dry and keep adding until I'm happy. Right up in here is the washer sticking out up there and I want to remove that entirely so that it's not in the way. Pretty much what I'm going to do now is start masking things off and getting things ready so that I can start sanding and then painting. Uh, to do this, I'm very carefully going to try, actually, I'm gonna to try to remove the hose down here and then pull this uh, through the other side. And I strongly suggest you do it this way. Break it loose first, because these hoses, they get old. 
And when they get old, bad things can happen. I don't think I had to remove that inner grommet so much. But with this, there were uh, two things on the sides that I pushed in and I was able to pull this right out. Now, I have to work that grommet. I found that removing this third brake light is super helpful because I can reach right up in here and get to uh, this hose and the grommet that's under it. Also, disconnect it here and pull it up through. And you might want to remove this third brake light, like I said, to gain access up in here to the backside of the squirter, as well as this uh, grommet that I'm trying to recover, which actually I just need to pull it up through and I can pull it right through this large opening. So I get this piece off, I can reinstall it. I want to remove the lock cylinder and to do that, I'm going to need to remove this cover. It's a little plastic rivet here that needs to come out and then the rest, I believe will just pull out. Yeah, I got to get this guy out first, pull it down. With that piece removed, I can get to the door or the latch lock, which is right here, which is held on by two 10 millimeters. And then there's also this little rod. I don't know if you can see that. That little rod's got to come undone. Recently had this out when I rekeyed it. And then you just pull it out. With the lock removed, I can just come in and take that little rubber piece out. And I can see this has been repainted. Check it out. There's paint on this grommet, so they didn't go this far when they did this work. And maybe why we're doing it now. Now that I'm getting prepared to paint, we might as well talk about the paint. And I got this from uh, paintscratch.com, and this is apparently cargo khaki, uh, the same color as the element. It came, the kit I got came with this, also came with a clear coat and a primer to go with that. Now, as an experiment, I took a scrap piece of metal and I painted it with a primer and then the uh, paint, then the clear coat. And this is what I got. And I went and checked the match, which is pretty darn close, at least in my eyes. So before you even get this far, make sure your paint's going to work. Make sure it's going to match. Now, I'll be able to feather this out and blend it a little bit. But overall, I wanted to make sure that the paint that I had would work and kind of looks like this well. And now I will begin the tedious task of sanding. <laughs> we'll be doing a lot of this. I'm going to start with 120 grit. I don't have any 150. I would use 150. I'm looking for a light grit because I, I don't want to dig into it like with an 80 grit or something like that. So I'm just going to basically do what I can to take off this surface rutch, which is here and obviously around this. And then there's some other areas down here that you've probably seen. Then any of these other small little things that I find like this, I'm also going to hit those. Let the sandpaper do the work. And I'm not as concerned because I've got clear coat and paint and made sure they matched and all of that. The idea is to get rid of as much of the rust as you possibly can because the rust will come back. Rust never sleeps as they say. And don't be surprised if you find more rust under the paint because what you see on the surface with rust is usually only the tip of the iceberg. Now you want to get down to the rust, but you also want to, you see how there's like little layers here? You want to feather it out so that you don't see like hard lines where the repair was made. This could probably use a skim coat of body filler. I don't know if I'm going to go there though. There is definite evidence that this has been worked on. And I say this because I see a little bit of body filler there. I see some like heavy sanding marks that weren't made by me. Also, I came over to this emblem and you might be able to see the paint underneath it. It looks like they masked it. Well, it looks kind of junky under here. You can kind of see where that paint doesn't quite match up. This is kind of coming off anyway. A quick way to say this might be this rust roux is kind of what you get when you don't do a proper paint job or when you don't do proper body work and then you paint over it, which I can't say what I'm doing is proper, but it's certainly more proper than what they're doing, I think, or what they did. So back at the dealer, 
uh, we would install gold packs. This was like late 90s. And that was kind of a thing to basically swap out the silver emblems for gold ones, which incidentally uh, didn't hold up nearly as well as the silver ones. Anyway, the way we used to mark things so that we knew where to put the emblem was before we removed it, we would take a piece of tape and line it up. Now this E over here is a little tricky. All you really need is two sides. So you need like one over here and one over here. But given that it looks like I've got to do my sanding down there, that should help us get it pretty much in the same spot. I do have concerns when I paint this that you're gonna see this line. So here's the next trick I'll show you. Our shop tiles used to come uh, with in bales of twine like this. And so we would just repurpose it uh, to remove emblems. You can come up underneath them like this and just sort of cut the adhesive and boom, old element's gone. Now it's the ghost of element. There's a few different ways that you can deal with the remaining adhesive. One of those ways is with a plastic razor blade. Yes, such things exist. And with those, you can just come under and peel off the old. It might take a little bit of time, but the plastic will not harm the finish. But you can see my finish is crap here anyway. One of my coworkers actually discovered this, so I can't claim credit for it, but this is an eraser wheel. This will work extremely well as far as getting this stuff off and it's just chucked up to my drill as you can see. Now, I saw this when I went looking for a new eraser wheel. This is called a Wizzy wheel. And this is made out of similar material, but it has these ridges here and it might work faster. And I'm gonna sort of do a head to head comparison, uh, but this is how we did it at the dealer. As you can see, it's pretty darn efficient. Let's try the whizzy wheel. Okay, this one's more efficient because these little blocks really dig in. So that worked pretty darn good. And it doesn't seem to be digging at the paint at all. Okay, I like the whizzy wheel. Eraser wheel also works. That worked really well. This just seemed to be more efficient, but the way it's wearing, it looks like it's gonna wear out quicker than the other one. Either way, I think this is the most efficient way of getting rid of the adhesive. You might be able to see how screwed up the paint is a little bit better now. So I'm gonna feather that out with some sandpaper and uh, get it prepped for paint. Emblems like this are things that insurance companies don't wanna pay for. Because this, this emblem wasn't so bad. I think this one might've been 30 or 40 bucks, but the Honda one was like 120. And when insurance companies see that after a collision, they, they don't want to see that. <laughs> so like, hey man, is there anything we can do to like keep costs down? Well, we can paint around the emblems and leave those alone. That'll save us like 200 bucks. That sounds like what we're doing. Seems to be a body line right here that I could use also if I need to remove this tape, which I'll be honest, I probably should before uh, painting because you will see these lines. I think that takes care of this lower part as far as the first round of sanding goes. I'm gonna wipe this down, prep it, and probably hit it with a little bit of primer. I'm gonna be removing these taillights anyway uh, to do the lights on the insides of them. So I'm gonna get these taillights out of here. Um, then I'm gonna move up top and get that clear coat sanded and then we'll get everything masked off and ready for paint. Now up here, the idea is to obviously smooth out this clear coat that's pretty much gone away. And I'm looking to smooth it out more than anything. This is once again, 120 grit. Your hands will tell you more than your eyes if it's smooth or not. And obviously you want it to be smooth. Feels way better. Maybe still a little bit more up here. Sanding is needed. I think that'll do it. Let's do some masking. 
Now that I have everything masked off, and yes, I could have used uh, paper or a little bit of plastic so I didn't have to use so much tape, but oh well. Anyway, now that it's all masked, I can prep for paint. To do that, I wiped everything down with a microfiber towel and then went back with prep spray, sprayed it on, and then let it dry. Now the prep sprays had a chance to dry up. Next step is to add a little bit of spot primer in these areas, is what my plan is, and use that as sort of a really thin coat of body filler. Uh, I can wet sand against that, smooth things out real nice. Then we'll add the finished coat, then the clear. I'll just let that first coat dry for a minute, come back and add another one. Then we'll do some wet sanding and see what it looks like then. I put on a second coat of primer. I like the thickness. And now I have some 600 grit wet sanding paper that I'm gonna use to smooth everything out. This is what the wet sanding has yielded. I had to remove this tape. You probably saw me do that, but I marked the two areas where I can go across. So I'll just use some sort of straight edge to relocate that emblem. I did sand through in a couple of spots. So I am gonna have to come back and uh, add another coat of primer. But I think I got these edges feathered like I wanted. So now I'll dry it all off, hit it with another very light coat of primer to cover up this stuff and uh, then we'll uh, we'll see where it's at if it looks good then we'll put a coat of paint on this has all had uh, about 20 minutes or so to set up i think i'm ready for the finished coat this is going to be like five ten minutes come back add another coat five ten minutes come back add another coat until i'm satisfied with what i see Well, after it's set up for about 10, 15 minutes, I think we're ready for some clear. Everything looks really good. And those spots that you see that are dark are gonna go away uh, when I put the clear on because I stayed around the emblem here. So you probably see the shiny here, but I'm about to cover the whole thing in shiny. And then we'll let it sit overnight. This is three coats of clear. I went pretty heavy on the last coat. What I was finding is sort of an orange peel look that I wasn't really comfortable with. So I laid it down a bit thicker on the last one. This doesn't come out of the can as good as the other ones do, unfortunately. And yeah, I know I'm sacrificing this emblem. I'm not concerned about it. Obviously I'm replacing it, but I think I'm gonna let this sit overnight, come back in the morning, check it out, see what I'm dealing with, and then decide from there. But so far, I'm kind of pleased with the result. I mean, the color match isn't really that far off and I doubt it's gonna be even noticeable. And I think those black emblems will pop even more against this fresh finish. Um, well, we'll be back tomorrow. Only a few seconds for you. And we're back. I told you it would only be a couple seconds for you. This is after sitting overnight. I applied a coat when I first came in this morning. I'm seeing a lot of this orange peely kind of stuff and I could probably go in with some thousand grit sandpaper and wet sand all this down smooth and re-clear re re coat things until, well, it looks wonderful. But I'm not going to do that. I simply don't have the patience for doing body work properly. This is going to get me by. I'm happy with it. And I think once we get the emblems on, you won't even notice. However, I did notice one thing that I kind of messed up on. I didn't mask all the way up. And as a result, well, I made myself a line, which I'm gonna see if I can remove. But right now, I'm going to tape off this and uh, get this ready to be replaced. Normally, Honda has like a couple of little pegs that stick out in here and go into the body to locate this center one. I'm not sure they have that here because the new one doesn't have those little pegs sticking out. So I'm gonna mark off all of this uh, because it's pretty important to get this in the correct position. I'm gonna employ the same removal technique as I did with the other emblem. Don't worry, I'll be careful with the new paint. It was a combination of using the regular eraser and I used a little bit of glass cleaner to get to this point. It's not perfect, 
but my fear is that I keep going and then I mess up a clear coat and then I'm back to square one. So to avoid that, I've placed it here just to see what it covers. And it covers a lot of the adhesive and stuff that may still be hanging around there. I'm just double and triple checking things to make sure that I get it placed correctly. I can really get one shot at this. Adhesive backing is off. It's time to commit. It looks straight. And we commit. Oh no, it looks like just a tiny bit paint has come off. And if I continue with this, I'm gonna dig into the clear coat more than I feel comfortable with. I think I know how to handle this with just a dab of touch up paint. You know, and it has occurred to me that I could probably just clear right over the top of this. And I might do just that. Just let that do its thing. Oh, it's type R paint. <laughs> I think I might hit that with a little clear, but let's, let's do the other one. That seems about right. Right? That looks killer. Killer. It's exactly what I wanted. The accents really set it off. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of clear over this. Try to clean this up a little bit. And then we'll remove the masking tape, put this thing back together, wash this off, call it done. I really like how that looks. And while it's drying, I'm going to remove my masking. That transition does work. The color match is pretty darn close. I'm happy. I think it turned out rather well. And the color transition is not that bad. You know, it's not very noticeable at all. I always knew there would be something, but it, it does look better. Looks way better than that rusty stuff that was dripping down before. Now let's get it all back together with new LEDs. Now I'm not doing the turn signals because that way I'd have to install either a new flasher uh, element or a resistor. So I'll just leave these like they are. But the reverse lights and brake lights, those are getting swapped for LEDs. To try and address my little mistake here, I'm going to use some of this. I'm going to put it on a rag and try to scrub it off and see if it'll go away. It is working though. It's actually working surprisingly well. Like it never happened. This one here is the running light slash brake light. That one gets a red one. This one here is the reverse light. This one gets a white one. Let's just check those real quick. Nice. Also nice. Oh yeah. We're good. I believe that's job done. Personally, I am very pleased with how things turned out and I'm, I actually accomplished all of my goals, which was uh, to get rid of that rust that was back there and also to black out the emblems. Those were, oh, and to get rid of that clear coat issue across the top. I think that worked out the best overall out of any of it. I think that really, really turned out. As far as that orange peel and other stuff with a clear coat, to be honest, I could have spent more time doing it. I'm not a paint and body guy. This is really not a shop to do this kind of work in, but I soldiered through. I wanted this to be done and you might have the same issues in your own garage or driveway and want to get the best result you can. For that, what I would suggest is in between those clear coats, go over it with a wet sand of like a uh, 1000 or 1500 grit paper to smooth things out and that should make that come out a lot smoother. I also was trying to preserve that emblem's location so that I could get back in there and that kind of burned me too. You saw what went on with the element emblem. Anyway, I hope the information was useful to you no matter what. Once again, I'm pleased with the result. All the lights work. I really like that blinky third brake light. Don't ask me why. Some of you might have noticed the missing license plate light. Well, I found it too when I replaced it. Here's a look at the emblem after the touch up paint and clear coat. It's not too noticeable. Some of you probably also saw this dent right here. 
and that's totally my fault that happened when i was trying to use my plastic hammer to knock this back in and that wasn't a good idea as you can see here obviously now i had hoped to put a spoiler on this but i couldn't find a decent aftermarket one and the original equipment ones are stupid expensive so maybe i'll run into one someday and if i do i'll be able to cover this up with a spoiler i will link uh the paints and parts and things i use down in the description to make them easy for you to find i will also link eric the car guy in the description which is where i ask you to go if you have automotive questions not covered here thank you so much for watching today be safe have fun stay dirty i will see you next time and i post videos on friday by the way come back you want to come back watch more stuff i'll see you then